welcome back to another episode of physics in this particular video i'm going to go over one of my favorite questions on projectile motion we have an invader that's going to attack a city using a trebuchet that will fire projectiles over a castle wall the question will be will the projectile clear the wall and hit the city let's start by drawing some pictures let's have a trebuchet it is 10 meters above the ground. It has a height of 10. It is going to launch projectiles at 50 degrees above our horizontal. And it's going to fire with an initial velocity of 49 meters per second. The castle wall is 125 meters from the base of my trebuchet. So it's going to be around here. This is 25, 125 meters. And my castle is 75 meters high. So here are my castle walls, okay? 75 meters high. And the projectile, hopefully, is going to go and clear the castle walls. We'll see. We have to do some calculations to check whether or not it's true. Before we start the question, we have to think about what are we looking for? Before I dive into this question, I highly recommend you to pause the video, try it out yourself before starting the video again and me going over this. Right now, pause the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an approach to solving this problem. After I tell you the approach, again, I think it's a good idea to pause the video, do the calculations yourself, and compare your calculations with mine. If you're stuck on the approach, let's think about it this way. In order for the projectile to clear the castle wall, it must, after moving 125 meters in range, it must be higher than 75 meters above the ground. Which means what we can do is if we are able to find a time for the projectile to travel a horizontal distance of 125 meters, we can use the time to find out how high will that projectile be at that particular time. One thing we do have to be careful of, our trebuchet is already 10 meters above the ground, which means the displacement of our projectile in the vertical direction only needs to be 65 meters. It only needs to be 65 meters, not the 75 meters. So be very careful of that one. Here is our approach. Our approach is we're going to find a time for our projectile to travel 125 meters horizontally. Then we're going to use the time, we're going to use the time to find its displacement, displacement in our y direction after t seconds. And the D, the displacement, is the Y, is our displacement going to be greater than 65 meters? If so, it will clear the wall. If not, it will hit the wall and not hit the city. So this will be our approach. Right now is a good time to pause your video, use the approach, do the calculations yourself, and check your answer with mine in the end. Hopefully right now you've tried a few steps, and even if you're stuck right now, we can now go over the question together. Okay, before we do any projectile motion question in 2D, it is often a good idea to divide your motion into its X and Y components. Remember, they act independently of each other. I'm going to have my table here on this side of my page, my X and Ys. I know that my horizontal displacement is 125 meters. In my y direction, we don't know. This is the one that we want to find. We don't know what this one is. We hope it's greater than 65 or not if you don't want the city to be destroyed. We can find the time. Right now we don't know what the time is. We do know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. 
we can find vix. We can find the horizontal velocity component. And we also can find the initial vertical velocity component as well. Why don't we start off with the horizontal ones to help us find t after traveling 125 meters. I'm going to use green for our horizontal and purple for our vertical, so to keep things a little bit more clear. In our horizontal direction, we are going to, in order to find vix, we need our initial velocity times, over here we have our cosine of 50. This one is 49 times cosine 50, giving us cosine 50, this will be 31.49, 31.1, 31.5 .1, meters per seconds. Remember I taught us in a previous video, you can check it out by the way, how to store numbers on your graphing calculator. I am going to store this number in our graphing calculator as the letter A. So I'm going to store STOR alpha A and here I have it. Okay, so I'm going to write down just to keep track. I store it in under A. And I'm going to write it here in my table. This is our 31.5 meters per seconds over here. Once we have our velocity, we can now find T given our distance. To find T, we need our distance divided by our velocity or VIX. This one is 125 meters divided by 31.5 meters per second. This one will give me 125 divided by my answer, 3.96868 seconds. Say hey, this is 3.97 seconds. And again, I'm going to store this number on my graphing calculator, alpha t. Where's alpha t? Alpha t over here. Recording it down just so I remember, our time is 3.97 dot 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 seconds. Now we have the time. We are going to use our time in our vertical components to find out y. But before that, we probably need to find viy. To find our viy, again, we break our velocity into our components. This is vi. Inside of cosine, we're going to use sine 50. This is 49 sine 50. On our graphing calculator, this one is 37.53, which I'm going to store this one as alpha B. Enter. 37.53. 37.53 dot 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 meters per seconds and I stored it as B. I'm going to also write it over here 37.5 ish meters per seconds. Okay. We have the initial velocity, we have time, acceleration, and we need to find displacement. The equation you might be thinking of would have been this one. D is equal to, or I'm going to use Y since we've started with Y is viy times t plus one half a t squared. Putting in our values, we have initial y component. This is 37.53 dot 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 times our time, which is 3.97 dot 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 plus one half negative 9.8, not positive, times our time, which is 3.97. 97 dot 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 squared. Putting this into our calculator, I will get my b. So remember, I'm going to use my stored value for b. I'm going to multiply that one by my time, which is stored as t. Then I'm going to add 1 half negative 9.8, which is the same as subtracting 4.9, taking half of 9.8, times our time squared. So alpha t squared. This one gives me 71.79, 71.79 dot 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 meters of displacement. Okay. 
That's my why. You might be thinking, oh, 71.79 meters is less than 75 meters. Therefore, it might, it will probably not clear the castle wall. But be very careful. Remember, our trebuchet started 10 meters above the ground. It only needs a displacement of 65 meters in order to clear the castle wall. If we check our y value that we calculated, this one is indeed greater than 65 meters, not 75 meters. Therefore, yes, it will clear the castle wall. So when you're approaching a question, something that's more on the difficult side, think through the problem. Try to reason out what you need to find before actually doing any calculations. I hope you enjoyed this problem as so much as me solving it. And tune in to next time with physics.